Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about my first roll of Psych Blues number no. 5, which I shot in the Hasselblad X-Pan 2. This film was picked out for me by Riley over on Patreon. Let's get into it. Psych Blues films are pre-exposed hand fog rolls of Kodak Ultramax, which are sold and produced by Dustin Adams. I'll have a link to his website down in the description below. There are six different variants of Psych Blues currently, with a seventh coming out soon. If you're familiar with like double film and revelog, it's the same kind of genre of film. Psych Blues number five in particular is pre-exposed down the top and bottom of the borders of your frame. And for that reason, I felt that this was kind of the safe choice out of the two roles that I have because it would be less likely to interfere in a negative way with one of my subjects. Which isn't to say that I don't want that. It's just that for my very first role of this type of film, you know, I've never shot double film or revelog films. I wanted to just play it safe. As the base film for Psych Blues is Kodak's Ultramax, it's an ISO 400 film in 36 exposure rolls meant for development in the C41 color negative process, yielding negatives which have to be inverted either in scanning or printing to give you your final positive image. Dustin has said, however, that he has seen pleasing results with this film pushed as high as 1600, but he does still recommend only shooting it at 400. The canisters are DX coded, so the communication between the film and the camera works just fine, so you can load this into any point and shoot camera. I shot this roll of film on a day out shooting with Patrick from Sprocket Holes. Again, his channel is above and linked down in the description below. You should check his work out. Uh, unfortunately, the weather turned to absolute crap when we met up. It seemed okay, but then it's pretty much immediately after we met up, it started just raining torrentially, so the weather was very overcast for pretty much the whole day, just because of the cloud cover, which wasn't ideal, but we still went shooting anyway because you make do with what you have. As I've already mentioned, I shot this roll in the Hasselblad X-Pan 2, and I shot it at 400 ISO. I used all three lenses in that system, the 30, 45, and the 90 millimeter. And notably, all of the shots taken with the 30mm lens use the center filter because it's not good without the center filter, as I'll get into when I do an inevitable review of that lens. As with all of my color negative film, I had it developed by the folks at Cons Cameras, links to them down below, and I scanned it with the 1DX Mark III, which I'm recording on, and processed them with Negative Lab Pro in Lightroom. It's Ultramax. Ultramax may only be a consumer grade film as far as Kodak is concerned, but it's a really good film. It has good sharpness, nice saturation, punchy contrast, it has decent grain, especially for a 400 speed 35mm film. And that's a very solid base on which Psych Blues uh, is built on. You know, Dustin could build Psych Blues on any film, but choosing Ultramax was definitely a good decision. It's unpredictable. You get a surprise with every frame. You never know exactly what colors and patterns you're going to get on a given frame. This can be a bad thing, but I personally believe that film is inherently experimental and creative and imperfect, you know? So for me, it's very nice to have that extra layer on top of that occasionally. I mean, not with every roll of film that I shoot, but from time to time, it's nice to just go ahead and shoot and not really know what you're gonna get. They're unique. I mean, okay, you have the double film and Revelog films as well, but all three of these brands represent a very small portion of the film market. And sure, each of them is doing something different, but collectively they represent something very different within the already, I mean, globally speaking, pretty niche and hipster base that is film photography, right? And I think it's admirable that all of these brands are able to do something like that and succeed at it. Cost. It's $15 a roll, which is basically portrait money. But to be fair, Dustin is running a very small operation, comparatively speaking, and he's doing this stuff all by hand. So 
for what it is, I think it's a fair price, but it isn't a cheap film in an absolute sense. The beams. I'm not talking about the horizontal neon bars that go on the top and bottom of the frame. I really like those, but some of the shots have these like beams or stripes going from the top to the bottom. And I've had a couple of shots on this roll that I wouldn't say are ruined, but are tainted by that. Again, that's the unpredictability. You don't know what you're getting. And to be fair, it is on me for trying to take something mind blowing on what is, and no offense to anybody here, what would be classed as a gimmick film. But it's just really disheartening when you see what could have been a really nice frame with this neon beam down the side of it. And it's just not ideal. Lastly, latitude, but not in the normal sense. I'm not talking about highlight and shadow detail when you over or underexpose your film. What I'm talking about is the fact that the pre-exposed areas are exposed at ISO 400 and exposed correctly, so to speak. So if your image is over or underexposed, in an absolute sense, the relative brightness of the pre-exposed areas and your base image are going to be way off. So if you overexpose, the neon areas will become much darker. And if you underexpose, like I did here, you can see that the pre-exposed areas completely take over the frame. I pushed this really hard to bring out the base image. So while it isn't a unique issue with this film, it is something to bear in mind when shooting these types of film in general. Now I'm going to boot up OBS and we're going to have a look at my top three images from this roll in a deep dive. So this I would say is my third favorite image from the roll. I really do like this, even though I'm struggling to really define why. Part of it is that on the left hand side of the frame, which is clearly split from the right by that white pillar here in the center, you have the pink neon bars on the top and bottom, which kind of work with these two pillars on the corner and in the middle to make a direct frame around this piece. But then the right hand side, which is much more chaotic with its layout, has well a more chaotic spread. You have the red and the green kind of all over the place. I think it works quite well here. Okay, shot number two. I almost didn't take this, but I'm very, very glad that I did in the end. I wasn't sure about the lighting, the metering. You know, I was using the X-Pan's built-in meter and the contrast is extremely high on this graffiti here. This is at the canal in Dublin, um, near the Ranala Lewis stop, just for anyone who knows that part of the city. I thought it was pretty cool, but all of the graffiti here pretty much is either silver, white, or black. So it was extremely hard to meter. So I just took some meter readings, averaged them out in my head and just went with it. And it worked really well. Um, here, you know, you've got the clear top and bottom blue and pink and violet neon bars. That works well. And I that kind of just contrasts in a way with the, the black frame around the silver bubble. And then obviously the actual political message, which is people arguing over lockdown restrictions in Dublin indirectly via graffiti. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, forgetting the political aspect, people building layer on layer is kind of how graffiti works in a modern city, right? You know, people build and cover up each other's art and things kind of evolve over time. So I would be interested in going back there, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going out shooting tomorrow. I might go up there. This is by far my favorite picture of the roll. I took this with the 30 millimeter. This is one of the few shots taken with the 30 millimeter lens. I almost didn't take it at all. It didn't look like it was gonna work. And it probably wouldn't have with a quote unquote normal film. This is so, this gives me like David Bowie vibes, to be honest. You've got your actual Ziggy Stardust, your multicolored, beautiful overlay on the actual image. This is the kind of shot where these psychedelic blues films actually properly shine. Most of this roll, I was not super happy with. This, I'd love to get a big print of this. I'm so, so happy with how it came out. If you see on the bottom right down here, you can see just how severe of an angle I was. This image uh, is pretty much vertical, actually. I can't remember the artist's name at the moment, but I do follow him on Instagram. I will find it and I will put a link to his work in the description below. If you're a fan of Kodak films and you want something wild and out there, this could be a good choice. I think this would be fun at like a party, 
you know, when those are a thing again with a point and shoot camera with a flash, I think it could be very fun to bring to that kind of more casual fun event. I might bring a roll to the wedding I'm doing in a few weeks. I know this isn't for everybody and I don't expect that it would be. It's a niche product within an already quite niche market. However, there is definitely a strong argument for trying it if you're into that kind of creative, unpredictable side of film photography. Yeah, I recommend at least giving it a try. I know it sounds like I've been completely ragging on this film for this entire video, but I just wanted to be honest. It's a bit of a difficult film to shoot because it's unpredictable, but it's fun. That's where part of the passion of film photography lies for me, not knowing exactly what you're getting. And in that sense, this film fulfills that part of my spirit or my soul better than a lot of other films do. And there's a lot to be said for how shooting film or shooting a type of film makes you actually feel. If you don't like this type of film in general, there's no way I'm going to convince you to try this film at all. But I mean, if you judge an X-Pan by its ability to autofocus, I mean, you're always going to be disappointed, right? So if you set your expectations accordingly, I think this could be a very enjoyable film for most people. So thank you for watching the end of this video on my first roll of Psych Blues number 5, shot through the Hasselblad X-Pan 2. If you like this video and enjoy what I do, please consider subscribing or even donating to my Patreon where the tiers start at just 1 euro per month. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every single day. If you have any recommendations for something you think I should try out that I may not have already seen or purchased, let me know in the comments down below. Stay safe and bye-bye for now.